So I want to do a follow-up on the Norbert example. The second mass ejection that I had mentioned in the, in the previous video is most likely the one that was associated with the event that was Hurricane Norbert, what came to be Hurricane Norbert. And so I'm, try, I'm trying to get the timing, the differential timing between the event that we see in the coronal mass ejection and the actual cyclonic activity um, uh, hammered out a little better. I wanted to mention that um, cyclone uh, Rashmi is associated with this, most likely, this uh, coronal mass ejection. It formed rather suddenly, and it's not clear what the category was when it made landfall. If you're watching along, you can see that there's definitely an association between the formation of these cyclones and these mass ejections. Now, one thing that's really strange about the mass ejections we've been seeing is that we're not seeing the kind of um, high energy um, uh, emissions that usually are associated with them. I think some of these, these ejections are coming from places where there aren't even spots, which is peculiar because usually it's the, it's the sunspot that ha is the source of the mass ejection and we're seeing the mass ejection coming from areas that are just active regions. We're seeing, it, we're seeing the ejections come from areas on the sun that don't have that aren't forming spots, and so there's there's some type of a change in the energy um, uh, from the sun that is uh, associated with the extended solar minimum, and this is a perfect time to uh, to study this. I'll go ahead and link the um, the Hinode and the the Soho um, uh, uh, sites in the comments if you want to if you want to try to follow along. I'll go ahead and link the National Hurricane Center too, but they won't cover the cyclones that are probably going to be forming um, in the southern hemisphere now that the the winter has has begun in the northern hemisphere. That the uh, the cyclones continue in in the uh, in in the southern hemisphere. It's a it's a constant thing. It's just that the season changes uh, just like our season does. The this the cyclone season, the hurricane season changes. And so, um, if you want to follow along, this is, um, this is really interesting stuff for me. Um, not just because it validates astrotometry, but because I think it's exciting to be able to, uh, to see the mechanisms of the, uh, of the universe in real time. I think it's just, I think it's just amazing. But, um, so, th part of the reason I chose to do this video now is because there will probably be another one from this new event. I'm expecting a cyclone to form. And so I'm predicting the formation of another cyclone. Um, looking, judging from the size of this ejection, it might be a it might be a rather large cyclone in the in the next I would say two or three days tops. The news always has the word cyclone for the ones in the southern hemisphere. So if you just search Google News for cyclone, if you're wanting to if you wanted to track this and watch watch how the the formation um, happens, um, and then I'll put another link for the um, the uh, a global composite image so that you can get a look at the um, the whole earth composite from uh, a satellite and I wanted to also mention that this this cyclonic activity this um, relationship between the uh, the Sun and the earth um, in astrotometry even though astrotometry has a different um, paradigm on what we're actually looking at it is completely consistent with our understanding of, of the electromagnetic interactions and the force interactions between particles and um, magnetic fields. And so you have a you have a a mass of charged particles that's leaving the sun, and theoretically the direction that that particle is moving is going to determine the um, direction of the magnetic field change, the direction of the force. That that particle has on any other um, uh, ionized uh, ionic uh, particles such as chlorine or um, um, salt water, um, uh, sodium chloride, and water, um, and so the, there's this there's this relationship that that exists on that level. You can treat it just that way, if if you can't wrap your head on the the astrotometry of it, which is that, as Richard Feynman said. Um, the universe may be just one electron buzzing around and um, how we sort out the path of that electron um, is, is what, the, what the job is in astrotometry. And so I'm looking at 
what the relationship between space and time are. And so, in a sense, what you're seeing is the part of the causal relationships in our world, the part of the, um, the cause and effect that, is, that determines what's going to happen. So in other words, what we see uh, manifest as that event is going to affect the Earth in that there's no two ways about it. It's, it's a simple law of cause and effect. And so this in astrotometry is that movement, even though that movement hasn't happened yet. And so it's, this, it's, it's the same stuff that would be moving on the Earth in a different time. So it's, the, it's tracing that um, causal relationship, that relationship between the electron and its um, movement through time. And so, um, so that's, the, that's the concept of astrotometry, and I just wanted to try to clarify that. And, and you know, it's completely, it's completely consistent with this idea that when the Earth turns, the movement of the Earth itself is folded through time using the Sun as its axis. Now that's the, that's the more advanced way to look at it. The more advanced way to look at it is that the Sun and, and what the lumin luminosity that we appear that appears to be emanating from the sun is emanating from the sun because of our the nature of our movement relative to the sun so in other words our movement doesn't happen without without that luminosity and so that luminosity is in a sense uh, the earth's movement through time and so when you see a change in that luminosity when you see a change in the structure of what we what we are modeling as you know particles being ejected from the sun, um, that that is the change um, on the Earth. It's just that we're getting we're getting a look into the future by watching the uh, the movements and, and studying the sun.